In this lesson, we'll get started with our Copic marker illustration by learning how to plan for both highlights and shadows. All right, fantastic. So this is the Lesson 2 Begin file. If you want to go ahead and open this up, we'll be able to get started. So um, now this is actually kind of a, an inked line work asset from our Drawing Manga Anatomy and Poses in Photoshop course, but this is going to work great. So uh, let's say that we've drawn out a character and we've even cleaned it up maybe with some inks and we're ready to go ahead and start thinking about color for this character. Well, markers, specifically Copic markers here inside of Sketchbook Pro are a really great way to um, produce really quick and also really amazing color for uh, a character like this in uh, a really quick fashion. So let's go ahead and kind of look over here. You can see I've got my layer editor open. Uh, if you want to click on this button right here in your toolbar, you'll be able to open that up. And I've got two layers here. I've got an inks layer and I've got a background layer. Now, in order to kind of plan for both the shadows and the highlights that we're going to be creating with our markers, uh, let's go ahead and create a new layer here. And I'm just going to go ahead and click and hold on my inks layer. And I'm going to go ahead and flick towards the new layer option in my marking menu. And we'll go ahead and click again and flick towards the rename layer option. So uh, we'll just call this shadows slash highlights, something like that. All right, great. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my pencil here inside my brush palette. And let's go ahead and just click on our color puck and go ahead and grab maybe kind of a blue color, something we can uh, see pretty easily here. There we go. That'll work pretty good. So, uh, yeah, we can go ahead and see that. So now on this new layer, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here and we'll just kind of focus on her face for right now. I want to show you how to do this sort of on this one area. And I'll probably go through and do this in between lessons on additional areas around our character as we kind of progress through uh, the coloring process. So uh, basically, the first thing we need to do is think about a light source. So obviously, she's got this really long hair that's kind of hanging over her face and that hair is going to cast shadows on face. Now, the light source is obviously going to create highlights in certain areas, and uh, we need to probably be a little bit familiar with kind of the anatomy of the face or the curvatures of the face. So uh, we can kind of start here just by thinking about maybe uh, where some of these initial shadows might lie. I see a shadow possibly right there. I'm just coming in and basically just kind of drawing in these shadows with some scribbles. So uh, th this particular hair here is going to create a shadow, sort of like that. And maybe we're going to have a shadow kind of over here from some of the hair. Now, there's going to be a really big shadow underneath her jawline right there that's cast by uh, her head basically onto her neck. So uh, there might even be uh, a shadow kind of on the back side of her neck here, but most definitely down here kind of where the shirt is uh, sort of casting a bit of a shadow onto the, her neck. So I'm thinking as far as where the light source is, maybe it's going to be a little bit above and a little bit in front of her here. So uh, we're going to have some, again, shadows cast by the hair. We're also going to begin to see sort of some of the shadows start to collect in her eye sockets. So maybe we'll come in and draw sort of a shape like this and just kind of quickly shade that in. Sort of like that. Um, there's going to be... I'm actually holding the space bar so I can pan around here. Uh, and let's think maybe about a shadow maybe underneath her lower lip right here, something sort of like that. Um, and a lot of, oftentimes when I'm doing this, it's really just kind of like um, sort of a bookmark for me or a, no, uh, a notation that says, hey, remember, we're going to do some kind of a shadow here. So maybe there's sort of a shadow that kind of runs on the opposite side of her face here. Now, this is probably a good opportunity for us to go ahead and load up the brush set that I'm going to be using in this course. If we come over here to our brush library, you can see that I've already loaded this up. It's called Copic Marker Illustration, and you'll find this in the Referenced Files folder. And all you need to do is come over here, and you can actually start on your basic brush set and just click and hold, and then you'll flick towards this Import Brush Set option, and you'll just browse to that zip file in your Referenced Files folder. You can see that I only have a couple of brushes in here, and really we're only going to be using this for this particular pressure-sensitive eraser brush that I've created. So uh, maybe we want to come in here and erase that shadow away and redraw that. And then I'll uh, hit the S key on my keyboard to swap back to the pencil. And we'll just kind of come in here and shade that in a little bit more. 
All right, fantastic. Now, thinking about uh, shadows, that shadows are not the only thing we're going to be dealing with here. We're also going to be dealing with highlights. So um, we'll kind of get to those here in just a moment. I'm going to actually come in and begin to think about her other eye socket here. We're going to bring a line up sort of like that. And uh, maybe this eye socket kind of comes in sort of like so. Bring in some shadow here. You know, and these don't have to be pretty uh, shapes. These can be uh, just whatever you need to use as points of reference. I'm using basically shaded in shapes to represent shadows for this. And I'm going to come in here and draw just shapes in general for highlights. For example, we'll just pull in a highlight. Maybe, let me undo that back a couple times with the control Z. And maybe we have a highlight that sort of runs about like that. And uh, maybe there's a little bit of a shadow shape here. Maybe we've got kind of a little highlight shape that's uh, coming off and hitting her nostril here. Sort of like so. So we'll come in and do some stuff like that. Come in here, kind of bring this shadow down. Kind of representing her eye socket there. Uh, now as far as this kind of this area of her face right here, we're going to have to think about kind of a highlight in this area. So maybe um, there's kind of a the highlight here extends down. We'll just go ahead and swap back to my eraser and kind of pencil that away. Uh, now maybe there's kind of a highlight that picks up here on her upper lip and kind of thinking about maybe kind of bringing out the curvatures of her face. You know, her upper lip is going to uh, kind of have kind of the smile line typically if she was a realistic human. So maybe there's a break in the highlight right there. And we'll come over and kind of pull a highlight in around for her cheekbone here. And maybe down to her chin. Sort of like that. Now again, these are really just uh, rough placeholders. Once we get into the color for her, um, this will probably make a lot more sense. So uh, again, right at this point, we're just kind of coming in and drawing in basic shapes. So uh, if we wanted to carry this further, we could come down here and begin to think about maybe the shadow that's being cast here onto the, the lapel of her, uh, her blouse, uh, the collar of her blouse. Probably going to be kind of a shadow right here. Probably going to be some kind of a shadow in this area here. Probably come down a little bit like so. And we can go on and continue drawing these shadow shapes. You just pan up and we'll kind of work on her ear. Maybe there's a bit of a shadow here. And, you know, maybe this one comes down a little bit onto her jawline. And we'll come up and hit these little tufts of hair here. Maybe there's a bit of a shadow underneath those. Actually, let's undo back a couple times there. Pull that one down a bit. And let me just redraw that one here. All right, fantastic. So uh, basically, the reason we're doing this again is to uh, sort of map out uh, the variations in value and tone for her face that are going to eventually represent both shadows and highlights. So uh, based on these pencils here, I know that in these areas where I've drawn in kind of these shaded areas, these are going to be darker colors. I know that that's where the shadows are going to be. And I know that these areas that I've left white, those are areas that are going to be lighter in value, where the light source may not affect them as much. So um, you could even get a little more creative if you wanted to come in and do some more of a mid-tone. Maybe this area right here I don't want to be necessarily completely in highlight. So maybe we come over here and we just do a little bit uh, more of a sparsely hatched line, something like that just to kind of represent uh, that, hey, that is definitely not a highlight. Anyways, uh, feel free to uh, continue this process. Again, I'm going to do this uh, probably before we begin on new areas in terms of laying down color.
And again, this really isn't a mandatory step. This is something that just helps me when I'm working with Copic markers. Um, now, thinking about what Copic markers are, these are tools inside of Sketchbook Pro that relate to real world markers. You can actually go out and buy Copic brand markers at your local art supply store. And uh, typically the process in uh, creating a marker comp like this is going to involve um, maybe coming in and planning out for these different values. because. It's much harder to remove color from a piece of marker paper that you've actually laid down with markers than it is here inside of Sketchbook Pro. So uh, with that said, let's go ahead and move on to the next lesson. And then uh, in the next lesson, we'll pick up where we're leaving off here and we'll just get started dropping in some color on this girl's face.